Hi, I'm Kristen with the Park Place Regional Library with Houston Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to STEM. Today we're going to be doing a zipline design challenge, and this activity is recommended for kids ages 9 to 12. So in this challenge, what we're going to do, try to do is design something and invent something and build something that can take an object from one point to another using the force of gravity. So for this project, you are going to need some type of string and then whatever you have on hand that you can build a device that'll take one object from one place to another with. So that could be craft sticks, pipe cleaners, straws, um, whatever you've got on hand that you can use to build with. So also for this activity, we are going to need some help with some definitions. So this activity, we're talking about forces. So a force is a push or pull on an object. A force happens when two objects interact. That is when one object does something to the other object. And when the interaction stops, the force stops too. So we're gonna be mainly talking about two different types of forces, gravity and friction. You probably already know about gravity, but here's a definition just in case. So all objects attract other objects because of a force called gravity. Gravity is a pulling force that works across space. That is, objects do not have to touch each other for the force of gravity to affect them. And then the other type of force we're going to be talking about is friction. So friction is a force that acts between two objects that are in contact with one another. So they have to be in contact, unlike with gravity. It slows or stops movement between the two objects that are touching. Okay, so now that we have our definitions of force, um, I'm going to get some help from these little dinosaurs. So you can use whatever object you want to be moved from one point to the other. Um, I'm just using these little dinosaurs because they're fun. So this little triceratops is gonna help me right now. So gravity. So say we're trying to get little triceratops from up here. It's got the string taped up on this wall. So this is the starting point over here to the top of this chair. All right, and it's gonna go just with gravity. You ready, triceratops? Go. And it just stopped because gravity just pulled it down. So that's why we've got the zip line that's going to have a device attached to it that will carry our little triceratops friend or whatever you've got down. So a zip line is usually a cable, in our cases it's a string, that slopes from a higher end to a lower end. Um, you'll see them used a lot like to transport cargo or people, they're used to reach areas that are inaccessible like mountains or the canopies of rainforest and there's also used just for fun just because they're cool so our dinosaurs are gonna do it for fun I guess okay so dinosaur so all right the string is gonna help us so I've got another dinosaur ready to go here I just tied some string around him and attached him to a paper clip. And that's going to be my little demonstration for how he's going to travel down the zip line. All right, you ready, little dinosaur? All right. And he didn't make it all the way, he got to right about here. So that is gravity took him down here, but then at this point, the friction stopped. So what we, can we do to fix that? One thing we can do is make the incline steeper. So say for instance, you had no slope and it was just a straight drop. It just fell again because gravity. So the slope is what kind of slows it and controls it. So let's try something a little bit less steep. So I'm gonna pull my chair closer. I can also lower that end point there. 
All right, so we've got a steeper slope here. And what do you think? Will dinosaurs come make it all the way? Let's see. And ta-da! Made it. So the slope matters. All right, so another factor considered is how much mass or weight or objects you've got going down. So again, this is just for demonstration purposes. This does not look very safe and these dinosaurs don't look very happy. They're like all up in each other's business. But for our purposes, here they are taped together, a lot of dinosaurs. So how are we gonna get them all down the zip line? All right, you ready? You ready dinosaurs? No, too bad. And they were too heavy. Okay, we're gonna try again because this is science. So we test things and we try again. And the tape's coming apart because this was not a very secure design. So I'm gonna get more tape and I'm going to tape it up again on the door. I'm gonna use two pieces of tape this time. Here we go. So here's where it was. So I'm gonna tape it a couple times and you can secure it however you want and you can have it going wherever you want. It could go from a table to the floor, whatever works for you. Just as long as one end is higher than the other. Okay. I lost a dinosaur. Okay, it's all right though. He'll be all right. Here we go again. And they made it, they sagged, and I'm not sure, do you think they went faster than the individual dinosaur? I don't know. And it looks like this thing needs more tape too, because again, they weighed it down. So you need to have a sturdier. Okay, one more time. Go dinosaurs! And they weighed it down again. So that's something to keep in mind when you're designing something. It's also, they're a little off balance, so that could be a factor too in how they go down. So another thing to keep in mind is how they're going to stop. So in this instance, the back of the chair is stopping them from like flying over, but how else might you stop them? Maybe like a less deep slope, could slow them down, something to think about. So now that you've got the challenge and understand a little about the forces to think about, it's your turn to design something, invent something that will take objects from one end to the other. You can see how fast they'll go, how many objects you can carry. You can set up two lines and try and race them. So if you'd like to, you can share your designs, how fast they went, how many objects you carried, by posting to social media using hashtag I love HPL. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. We'd love to see what you make. So thanks for joining us. Bye.